In the past, brickmaking was done almost entirely by hand and was thus an extremely difficult and time-consuming process. But over the years, this activity has undergone quite serious changes. There are new methods and improvements in contrast to the past technology. Today, the production of bricks is a process that has been highly automated with the help of modern equipment. Let's look together at all the subtleties of the technology of its production. Let's start right off the bat. There will always be four basic, very important operations involved in the brick-making process. Clay preparation, molding, drying, and firing. And to get started, let's talk about the first, but one of the most significant stages of the whole production. Of course, we'll talk about the preparation of clay for brick production. Its preparation can be divided into five stages. Rolling out the clay is where it all starts in this challenging endeavor. It's clear that the quality production processes require pure clay. The top layer of soil can always contain various impurities. So the clay in this soil layer, which is about 7.9 inches deep, is simply discarded. This process is also called unwinding. After the top soil is removed, the clay is dug out of the ground and laid out on level ground. Then the cleaning process takes place. At this stage, the clay is cleaned of stones, various vegetation, and other impurities. If there are numerous solid particles, the clay is washed and sieved to remove all kinds of stones from the clay mass. In the majority of cases, special stone removing rollers are used. And after this procedure, the clay is sent to the box feeder. At the outlet of this machine, movable rakes are placed, which partially break the emerging pieces and push the clay into the runners, where the final grinding takes place. The next stage is weathering. You may think that this stage is not too important, but I hasten to change your mind. The purified clay must necessarily be exposed to the atmosphere for its softening. The weathering period can take about three to four weeks, or generally, a full rainy season. Typically, clay material is excavated just before the rainy season for larger projects. Next, we have mixing. If there's a need to add some ingredient to the clay, it's better to do it at this stage by loosening the material and spreading that very ingredient over it. Then it's necessary to take a certain portion of clay in your hands and direct it up and down in a vertical direction. That is, to do the very mixing. Lastly, there's the hardening process. In this stage, water is added to the clay and pressed or stirred. Pressing is done by cattle or human feet for small-scale projects, and for large-scale projects, a special pug mill is used as a grinding machine. In this way, the clay acquires a plastic structure and becomes suitable for further molding. As for the molding process, the resulting prepared clay is molded into special rectangular brick molds. This process is usually carried out in two ways, depending on the scale of the project. It can be hand molding for small-scale projects and machine molding for large-scale projects. If brick making is on a small scale and labor is also cheap, one can go for hand molding. Rectangular molds for these cases are made of wood or steel and open at the top and bottom. There are also two types of manufacturing and hand molding, which are ground and table molded bricks. As for the ground mold, in this ground molding process, first level the ground and sprinkle it with sand or ash. After placing the wet mold in the ground and filling it with hardened clay, pressing firmly to fill all the corners of the mold, the excess clay is removed with a metal or wooden punch or wire. The mold is then lifted upward, and the raw brick in the ground is revealed. The next step is to wet the mold again by dipping it in water and repeat the same process. And it's called slop molding. Sometimes the inside surface of the mold is sprinkled with sand or ash instead of being immersed in water, which is called sand molding. Counting marks of bricks are made with a pair of pallet boards. A counting mark refers to a depth mark that is applied to the raw brick during the molding process. But the table molded brick is similar to the hammer molding process in its basic process. But in this case, the bricks are made on a 6.5 by 3.2 feet table. And it should be noted that ground molding is more economical as compared to table molding. If an order is received for the production of bricks in large quantities, then machine molding in this case will be much more economical and practical. 
and it's carried out in two ways, with dry clay machines and plastic clay machines. So the plastic clay machines contain some sort of rectangular shaped hole in them, and when the hardened clay is placed in them, it comes out through it. Now the rectangular strips coming out of this hole are cut with wire to get the required thickness of the brick. These are also called wire bricks. At this stage, these raw bricks are already fully prepared for the drying process. Dry clay machines, on the other hand, are definitely designed to help save the producer time. It's possible to put mixed clay into these machines, skipping the hardening step, as it is done directly in this equipment by adding water. The method of molding in the production process of bricks is usually selected, taking into account the peculiarities of further use of the finished product. After molding, bricks contain some moisture, which must be gotten rid of. Why? Simply because during further firing, during burning, they can simply crack. Drying can be done naturally or artificially. In natural drying, bricks are stacked in stacks of 8 to 10 ladders. The bricks in these stacks should be arranged in such a way that air circulation between them is free. The drying period is typically between 3 and 10 days, but this also depends on the weather conditions. The drying pads are also prepared at a higher level than the normal ground to prevent the bricks from getting rainwater. In some situations, however, artificial drying is also used, as it does not require a very large space and is completely independent of weather conditions. For such drying, the heat of exhaust steam is used, and due to the use of special technology, the entire mass dries completely evenly. In the firing process, the dried bricks are fired either in clamps, small batch, or in kilns, large batch, to a certain degree temperature. At this stage, the bricks gain hardness and strength, so it's an important stage in production. The temperature required for combustion is about 2012 degrees Fahrenheit. If they burn beyond this limit, the output of the finished product will be brittle and weak. And if the temperature limit is lower, the bricks will not gain full strength and are likely to absorb moisture from the atmosphere. Hence, the firing must be done properly and well to meet all the requirements of a good brick. As you can see for yourself, the production process is quite complex and labor-intensive. But at the same time, it's interesting and diverse. Any construction or repair work is impossible without the use of a universal building material. Cement of different types and grades. We're so used to this product that we don't even think about the question, how is cement made? Let's dig deeper into the complex technology of production of such an important and necessary building material. Let's go. In construction works, cement is consumed as an independent raw material and as a component in the composition of concrete or reinforced concrete. Without further ado, it's clear that the process of its manufacture is quite expensive and labor intensive. And although today manufacturers on the market offer a huge number of types of cement, still, the production technologies remain standard. Let's talk about the stages of cement production. It's worth noting that the production of this building material should be divided into two main stages, obtaining clinker and quality grinding of the components. Clinker is a special mixture of natural character, which as a rule is made of lime, about 75%, and clay, about 25%. All of its components are necessarily fired in special furnaces under the influence of high temperatures. It's also possible to replace clay with other components of natural origin, such as rotten stone or dolomite. In addition, in the natural environment, there is already a ready-made clinker, which does not need to be fired at all. Yes, yes, do not be surprised. It's marl, such a rock. But in nature, there's very little of this material, and so manufacturers create clinker themselves, artificially. The second stage consists in thoroughly mixing the clinker components in special containers, and this is also a critical process. After the work is done, the resulting mixture is fired for a long time in special furnaces, thanks to which all the components actively begin to interact. As a result, the lime and clay form some balls, the size of walnuts, and only then the components again need to be mixed and crushed. As for the technology of cement production itself, it definitely has its own peculiarities, depending on the method. 
wet, dry, or combined. Technology of cement production by dry method. I'll say right away that from the perspective of economic profitability, this method is the most attractive. Apparently, that's why it's also used in almost every large production facility. What are its peculiarities? Firstly, it's the dryness of the components at absolutely all working stages. The basis of material production is based on the chemical and physical characteristics of the raw materials used. Each of the elements is necessarily subjected to an additional drying process and then ground to powder. The components are combined and mixed, or more scientifically, homogenized. The output can then be homogenization silage, or raw meal, which is sent to the kiln to undergo a delicate roasting process. It is this fired material that is called clinker. The next stage is when various necessary additives are added to the clinker, depending on the type of cement, after which all components are again ground and mixed. Finally, the obtained raw materials are sent to the prepared hopper for storage with the help of special machines. There, the cement is packed into bags of different capacities, and then it's sent for further shipment. Wet Cement Production Technology The next method is wet, and this means that the creation of the cement mixture takes place with a direct addition of liquid. It's not difficult to guess that this method is less popular than the one we just talked about. Carbonate chalk and silicate clay are used in its production. It's also possible to use iron-containing additives, such as BOF sludge and pyritic residues. The clay to be used is processed in special roller crushing systems, crushed to the size of granules from 0 to 100 millimeters. The obtained composition is further sent to the mixers for further soaking. This creates a slurry with a moisture level of about 70%. The components included in the mixture are mixed and pulverized using a specified percentage of moisture. The result is a charge with a moisture level in the range of 30 to 50%. It's here, at this important stage, that quality control is mandatory. If everything has been done well and correctly, the charge is fired at high temperatures, turning it into tiny grains. These are then carefully ground to a fine powder. Not surprisingly, this technology is only used in the production of some mortars. It's all about the labor-intensive nature of the processes. Technology of Cement Production by Combined Method Already from the name, it's clear that this technology has managed to combine two methods of cement production at once. The fact is that in the grinding drum, the sludge undergoes a stage of forced moistening to 40 to 45 percent. Then the composition passes through special filters to dehydrate it, after which it's taken out and sent for heating. This process also has the effect of significantly reducing the moisture content of the slurry. And only after all these moments, the cement mass is submitted to a strong heating, where it's regularly and thoroughly mixed. The finished product is sent for storage and for subsequent packing into bags. Making White Cement Mortar Speaking of cement production, it's impossible not to tell separately about the manufacture of white cement. This construction material is often used for surface finishing, and after its complete drying, it becomes pure white. The mix includes marl, limestone, marble, sand and clay, but not as much in quantity as gray cement. Another thing is marble chips, which constitute the greater part of the mixture. For the whitish color, responsible for the chalk and kaolin in the composition. Not insignificant in this production, the very quality of the water used. The material undergoes several levels of purification, so the result is cement of high quality. The grinding of clinker continues in the mill unit, in which a specific liner is installed. The grinding delicacy of white cement is much higher than that of ordinary gray cement. As a result, white cement products do not crumble, do not deteriorate, and are easy to care for. Therefore, 
The material is often used in the creation of various architectural forms and buildings. It's also important to say that such a snow white shade of the material allows you to create other colors. At the final stage of production, it's sufficient to introduce a certain percentage of pigment additives into the mixture. Thanks to the development of technology today, marble can be extracted and processed without any difficulties. This stone is characterized by a wide range of applications as a facing material for different surfaces. Therefore, researchers are in constant search of new deposits of marble and work on improving the method of its extraction. And about all the details of this case, you'll learn from our video. So let's go! At this point, each of these technologies is in the midst of intense development. To extract marble, a specialized machine must cut a whole series of channels and slots in the rock, which can reach 6.5 to 10 feet deep and 59 to 79 feet long. Explosions must not be used, as doing so could shatter or crack the marble. And there's no way that this can be allowed to happen. It's only then that large cranes are brought to the site, which actually extract the marble blocks. A large toothless bandsaw is used to cut rough stone, and water and sand is poured on it while it's working. Why? This is necessary so that the block is quickly and relatively easily cut into pieces of a certain size due to the friction of the steel blade and sand. By the way, sometimes instead of a rigid blade, specialists prefer the use of a wire saw. Then what happens? The pieces of marble are moved to a circular grinding machine, and the material itself is securely strapped down. Sand and water are blown directly on the rotating surface of the machine to level the surface of the extracted marble material. Well, and for additional smoothness, the process of grinding is performed. As for the finishing polishing, it's performed with a prepared mixture of tin oxide and oxalic acid, which is applied to the surface of the marble with a polishing wheel. Then the transportation process takes place. I'd like to point out that this is a significant stage. As a rule, such material is transported by rail in containers, but there are exceptions. Air, water, and road are also welcome, but they're much more expensive in terms of finances. To safely transport the material from place to place, fragile stone is packed in special crates or a pyramid, two stapled metal posts. In either case, the structure is tightly secured with straps. To prevent the marble from spoiling from friction with the belt, additional packing material is laid between them. Another important condition is that the transportation of marble slabs is carried out only in a vertical position. After the multi-ton blocks of marble are transported to the manufacturing plant, they're cut into slabs using digital milling machines. The marble slabs are then polished for the first time. Then, with the help of silica sand, pumice, hammers, and chisels, the material is embossed. Marble's natural elegance, color variety, and excellent technological properties make it the ideal material for creating an exclusive interior. Today, marble is used in various combinations for fireplaces, bathroom interiors, and flooring. I'm not even talking about the finishing of buildings, columns, arches, staircases, and other architectural elements. But you know, even though science and technology do not stand still, the extraction of marble even today remains a very labor-intensive and costly work. And this is one of the factors that explain the rather high cost of the stone. Now you can turn your backhoe loader into a giant chainsaw, and without much effort. You can do this with a very unusual attachment from the Italian company Dazzini. There may not be many possible applications for this giant chainsaw in construction, but it looks great. This model is designed to be mounted on a CAT 432D backhoe loader, and is specifically designed to take full advantage of the hydraulics of this particular machine. The saw can be operated right from the cab, and you can control the height and angle of the saw. Powerful stuff, I must admit. The Komatsu WA800 is a large wheel loader designed for use in heavy-duty mining and construction applications. Manufactured by Komatsu, 
a leading producer of heavy equipment, the WA-800 is known for its impressive size and hauling capacity, as well as its advanced features and cutting-edge technology. Its combination of size, power, advanced technology, and operator-friendly design make it a popular choice for mining and construction firms around the world. Here we go. The new Minimax saw is a cutting edge and compact power tool that offers exceptional cutting performance in a small and portable package. This innovative saw is designed to meet the needs of both professional woodworkers and DIY enthusiasts who require a versatile and efficient cutting tool. Despite its compact size, the Minimax saw packs a punch with its powerful motor and sharp cutting blade. It's capable of making precise and clean cuts through a variety of materials, including wood, plastic, and even certain metals. Boltec M10 and E10 are fully mechanized drilling rigs for anchor bolt installation, known for their high quality anchoring and productivity in mining operations. All of this became possible thanks to the implementation of intelligent options in the machines. By the way, both models are equipped with an optional electric transmission with a zero emission battery, which is also crucial, wouldn't you agree? To meet the widest possible technical challenges, Kimrock has developed various cutting wheel options with cutting depths up to 1,000 millimeters, with different cutting tool configurations and widths up to 400 millimeters. Interestingly, the DMW series is also capable of working underwater at depths of up to 30 meters, making this equipment ideal for trenching and underwater work. Meet the walking excavator from Siku. You might be amazed by the size of this machine, but believe me, there's nothing particularly surprising here. Thanks to its compact dimensions, the excavator excels in its job on extreme construction sites. So this excavator is truly the best choice for earthworks on steep slopes, in mountains, and on impassable surfaces. The Tesmec M5 Mechanical Trencher is a powerful and versatile machine designed for digging trenches in a variety of soil types and ground conditions. The M5 is a reliable and efficient solution for a range of digging applications. The Vermeer T655 is a powerful and versatile trencher that is designed for heavy-duty trenching operations. It is equipped with a range of advanced features that allow it to cut through even the toughest soils with ease making it an essential tool for a variety of construction and agricultural applications. The trencher is equipped with a range of advanced features, such as electronic grade control and a digital display. That's all, friends. Today, you've learned about all the processes of mining this beautiful material. I hope the information you got was useful to you. We'll be grateful for the like and subscription to our channel. Bye for now. Thank you for watching Smart Tech. We try to make good content for you. Every day we work for you. Video editor, screenwriter, designer, and content manager. We'll see you in the next video.